Hallelujah. Uh, I'd like to give thanks to God and uh, for the praise. And uh, we are, uh, we have started these uh, simple, basic concept Bible studies. And it's more of conceptualizing. Uh, I consider these like, uh, they are, we talked about what? what did, anybody remember what we talked about last week? Prayer, right? Something that all Christians are already doing. You are definitely doing them, and everybody should know. But why are we studying? Uh, it's, I consider it like, for Asians, rice. We eat rice all the time. But every meal, we eat it again, right? It's like the basic. It's the foundation, the, 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 the carbohydrate in our meal. And it's something that we can easily forget or get so used to my pattern that we forget to really think about it. And, and uh, especially for those who are uh, newer in, uh, in uh, church and studying, I believe that this will be a good, also a good review. So uh, please don't worry. We will uh, come back and resume full-on Bible studies again. Looking forward to that, right? Uh, one hour, two hour Bible studies again. But then uh, for now, uh, at least for a few weeks, we'll go uh, small, small beats and pieces. Is that okay? No? Do, we, do, do you want a full on Bible study? Okay, uh, let's turn to our main passage. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. I'll read it for you. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, the title is Keeping the Lord's Day. In the Bible, it's keeping the Sabbath, uh, but for us, it's keeping the Lord's Day. Uh, we call it the Lord's Day, this Sunday, because I'm not connecting, sorry. Uh, we're, we call it uh, Lord's Day because it's the day of the Lord. Uh, and keeping the Lord's Day is... The most basic thing, if you are a Christian, right? If you are a believer of God, this is the most, the first thing that you do, the most basic thing that we are to do. Although, at times, it seems like, uh, especially after COVID-19, it seems like a lot of people forget about the importance. In the Old Testament, they observed the Sabbath, which is a Saturday, and they gave burnt offerings. And they did that because they, in uh, two parts, in remembrance and looking forward to, in preparation. Remembrance and forward, uh, forward preparation. What, what did they remember? They remembered Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. God finished the creation of six days, and then on the seventh day, he rested, and that is called the Sabbath day. So they remembered to, and, and, and wanted to join in in this Sabbath of God. But because, they know because of the fall that eternal Sabbath is gone or they have lost it. And so what they are looking forward to and preparing was uh, the true Sabbath, restoration of the Sabbath that God will bring through His promised Son the son, seed of the woman. So in preparation for the Sabbath that will be restored by the Messiah, they kept it in practice. Okay? Now after the resurrection of Jesus, those who believed in Jesus, called Christians, they began to gather and worship and, uh, in service on Sundays. And that has, that has become a very uh, big uh, heretical thing to do for in the eyes of the Jews because in the Old Testament Bible, God said to keep the Sabbath day, the seventh day holy. But why are Christians gathering on, the, the, on Sunday, which is considered the f first day or the eighth day? It's also in the same way in remembrance of and then in preparation for. Now, 
they, we believe that Jesus came and fulfilled that Sabbath promise. And now he resurrected, gave us a new day, new life on the eighth day. Eighth day representing the uh, beginning of a new, new era, a new life. And so he gave us a new life. And on Sunday, he rose again. So we gather in remembrance of his resurrection. So that's why we call it the Lord's Day. It's the day when the Lord resurrected, right? And in preparation, looking forward to the new Jerusalem, new heaven and earth. So it's the day of newness. Old life has passed away and the new life in Jesus is born again right through his resurrection. That's the day we celebrate and looking forward to the new day, new eternal day in the new he heaven and earth, new Jerusalem. So that's why we are in pre preparing, looking forward to the new day we gather and worship on the new day. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but the concept of God's command and the, the consequences, uh, the, the, the significance and the, the weight of its importance carry on. Whether it's uh, the Sabbath day in the Old Testament or the Lord's day in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, for those who did not keep the Sabbath day holy, what happened? They were stoned to death. What would happen if we continued that law today? <laughs> and even generations, chunk of generations were omitted from the genealogy of Jesus Christ because they forgot about the Sabbath. They did not keep the Sabbath. Although we don't apply that literally in today's terms, as I said, the weight of importance carry on, continue on. What God was saying is, I do not want to consider you as part of my people if you don't want to keep the Sabbath holy. Um, we're not going to read this today, but read uh, Isaiah chapter 56. From verse 1, uh, I forgot until, read the whole chapter. But uh, it says, even the sinners... Even Gentiles, even cursed people do not lose hope as long as you keep my Sabbath and keep my covenant. That's how important, how magical, how powerful keeping the Sabbath was. People who are cursed, people who are doomed, these people can be restored and God said, I will write your name in the, in, uh, as my, my own children, sons and daughters. If you keep my Sabbath. That's how important and personal it is to God. So basically, in today's terms too, if we, if we, do, not, if there, if we do not live a life of keeping the Lord's day holy, we, it doesn't matter what we call ourselves, God may not recognize us as Christians, sons and daughters of God. It's like husband and wife got married. They say they love each other, but they never see each other. And through messaging, we love you, and I miss you, but never, never really uh, come. Uh, let's meet somewhere, and you never show up. I'm not talking about special cases where you have to live in two different places because of work or whatever, but, but then... You know, what husband and wife would do that? They, they say they love each other, but they don't want to see each other. It's too much of a hassle. I don't want to go through the traffic. I don't want to wake up early. I don't want to dress up. It's, it's too, too much work to meet you. <laughs> Make, uh, what, what do you think? What would you think? <laughs> Somebody says, I love you, but uh, I don't want to go through all that work. Let's uh, just meet on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. uh, or, 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 yeah. Okay. So, uh, Lord's Day, but, but uh, most of us, you know, we already, uh, it, this is 
It, it doesn't apply to you, to us, because you are here on the Lord's Day. Maybe I should be speaking to some other people. Uh, yeah, you are here. But the thing is, even though we are here physically, Lord's Days should not be kept religiously. It's not, it shouldn't be just a habit, right? It's the same. Sunday has 24 hours, just like any other day of the week. However, what we need to realize and why Lord's Day is so important is because God blessed that day. And the day, that day, when you come and meet with God, that time becomes Kairos time. Do you understand? There's Kronos time and Kairos time. Kronos time is chronological time, physical time, 24 hours. But even though you are spending maybe two, three, four, five hours in church, that short time that you spend is a time of death spiritually. It's quality time with God. You are actually building up time in the kingdom of heaven. Do you understand? And so I think I, I told you this story before. Uh, uh, old, uh, I know, uh, no offense, uh, Young, 70-year-old mother, uh, uh, young senior, 70-year-old <laughs> mother, it was her 70th birthday. All the children got together, and she was telling the children, I was widowed at the age of 30. Your dad passed away because of sickness. But before he passed, passed away, uh, he asked me to go on a trip with him. And on the way back, we held hands. He held my hand. And it was just one hour. And I could feel his love and care for that one hour. And that one hour was so deep, so meaningful to me. I was able to go through all the sufferings and hardships for 40 years because of that one hour. That one hour is the Kairos time. That's the hour of that's the eternal time, right? That one hour, that power from that one hour will last her forever, that love, right? When the Lord's days is the time when we spend that kind of time of love, time of care, we receive, we meet with God. There will come a time when there will be hardships, tribulation, even a time Maybe in our lifetime, when there will be tribulation where we are not able to worship God as freely as we are right now. But those, and, and keeping the Lord's days is in preparation for those times. This lady was not able to see or meet with her husband physically for the next 40 years or for the rest of the time until she goes to heaven to meet him. But because of that, that one hour, she was able to stay with him in her heart, right? Kairos time, what if, if I were to declare to you, I mean, my words don't have that authority, but, but if, if it is true that every time you have good Recon rec service, worship, recognized by God, every time you come to church, your life extends by one month. Our church will be packed. People will come. Don't you think? If it is true that your life gets extended one month for coming to church and worshiping God properly just one, time, one, one Sunday, who would not come? Right? Don't you wish that's true? Huh? But why can't, I, why can't we believe that it is true? Not only life extension, God promised, I'll give you more than one month full of blessings. I will give you eternal blessings. Eternal blessings is so big that we, we just want, we, we want that one month extension, not the eternal what feels more real, more practical? We want that one month extension when God says, I'll give you eternal extension. Right? It's too big. 
It's like unreal. Right? If we really believe that we can meet with God, spend that Kairos quality time, and receive blessings, why can't we be here? Right? And so let us believe and remember there will come a time when even if we want and even if we, want, if we, even if we pay a million dollars, we won't be able to worship. But we have a chance right now to spend that Kairos time with God. And in the end, those who have spent enough Kairos time with God will be able to last even through tribulation. And therefore, we cannot, it's, it's the highest priority. We cannot just cut it off. And, and keeping the Lord's Day, is, it includes praise before service. But then, I don't like that term, praise before service. Praise is part of service. It's not before. Okay. Praise. You're serving in the church. And worship service, the actual service. And it includes fellowship afterwards. I believe that God will count and bless you even from the time you're preparing at home to come to church. But many times, people, especially after COVID-19, people cut off everything front and back and just listen to the message, if they do. Listen to the message, drinking coffee, listen to the message, go to, telling God, God, oh, sorry, sorry, hey, can you stop the space bar and go to toilet and do things, prepare a meal for the kids, and then come back, God, now, now I'm ready, you can continue. When you have a meeting with God, do, try, try that. <laughs> right? Or maybe when God says, I, I'm waiting for you. We, we have a promise to meet, right? We have an appointment. Oh God, I got up late. So I might as well not go, then be embarrassed walking in late. God, I'm not feeling so well. I'm not, I'm not in the right mood. I got some things to do, too busy. So God, please, uh, we're supposed to have a meeting, but can you record yourself? I'll watch you later on YouTube. Try saying that when you go to heaven. Or <laughs> hope you go to heaven. Try saying that to God. God, can, can you just record yourself and I'll, be, I'll, I'll listen to you at my own convenience. God told Abraham to go to Canaan. What if God, Abraham said, God, your spirit, and I'll be there in spirit. No worries. I believe in you. I believe in you. I'll do everything here online. I'll send everything. I'll send my offering online. I'll do my, my commitment online, and then I'll, I'll be there in spirit and virtually. God's work would not have been fulfilled. Because we are human beings, God's work is on earth right now. Physical earth. Spirit, spirit's work being fulfilled through mankind. And so that kind of faith does not work. So I pray that we will remember. I mean, of course, it's convenient and for, for times when we have to go on uh, business trips, or we, can, we just cannot be there physically. Of course, you know, online, uh, YouTube, Zoom. It's helping us to keep up and to also be there because I cannot physically be there. And, it's, and for people who are ill and, you know, I'm not talking about those situations. I'm talking about our attitude, our faith, and our heart in coming to God. And so uh, let us remember this is Kairos time. We're entering into that magical spiritual Kairos time. And might as well, you spend energy, you spend money, you spend your time to be here physically. May we be 
to be able to enter into that Kairos time. Have true meeting with God every Sunday. Every, not only every Sunday, every time you come to church. Amen? And may you be the people that can testify and give testimonies to other people. I am blessed because I kept the Lord's day. May we be able to say that. And people will say, hey, how, how come you are so happy? How come you are so blessed? How come this? I keep the Lord's day. I meet the Lord every week, every day. That's why. Amen? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us sinners to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, to be able to meet with you. Father, allow us to meet with you day by day, especially on the day when you blessed us. As, De- as uh, Exodus 23, 14 and 15 tell us, you told us to come to your appointed place at the appointed time with our heart and our offerings. Father, help us to observe and keep our promises with you, our appointments with you, so that we can receive blessings. And Father, we believe that everyone here, you will pour out your blessings upon them. Allow them blessings that they need to survive and gain victory this, throughout this week, and also allow them eternal blessings, Father. Thank you so much for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give thanks to God. Amen.